Zwei. Drei. Hi, I'm Guru Elmer Ibanez of Lema Scientifically Earned System. I named this particular system in honor of my teacher, Grandmaster Benjamin Lima, the founder of the Lightning Scientific Arnis. In 1980, I started training privately under Grandmaster Lema after I was introduced to him by my first Arnis teacher, Master Vicente Sanchez. Since then, I have trained and personally adopted this brand of Arnis. In 1984, Grandmaster Lema graciously allowed me to begin teaching his system since then, I have been busy training and promoting his art. In this videotape series, we are going to introduce to you the basic components of our style. We shall be covering footwork, stances, basic strikes, and the 12 methods or combination of strikes. The blocking system, working of a stick at both long and short ranges, and the bigai tama, an application drill. Come, join us as we explore the Lema Scientifically Earned System together. Thank you. In this particular segment, we'll be showing to you the basic stances. In Lightning Scientific Earned, we have three stances. The straddle stance, the front stance, and the back stance. The straddle stance is done this way. The weight is evenly distributed on both legs, 50% on the left and 50% on the right leg. Now, basically, a uh, straddle stance is assumed or performed when you wait for the attack on a ready position. Mm -hmm. So, you may do this way. That's the straddle stance. And this is the straddle stance. And if it strikes you here, can block and proceed to straddle stance. That's the straddle stance. Now the front stance is done this way. The weight is 70% on your front leg and 30% on your hind leg or rear leg. Now, a front stance is done every time you come into your opponent. Meaning to say if he strikes you here, you block him and you close in to be able to ward him off or to block his hand. That's the front stance. And notice the hind leg is not straightened. It is slightly bent, just like the front leg. And you should not be able to see the toe of your feet, of both legs, especially on the, on the front leg. So that's how you bend your front leg. Now we go to the uh, back stance. Back stance actually, it's just the opposite of the front stance. Here, the right rear leg is supporting the 70% of your weight, and the 30% is on your front leg. Again, you shouldn't be able to see the tip of the toe of your foot, no? of your rear leg. And again, the front leg is slightly bent. Now, the uh, back stance is done in this when you apply the back stance, it should be done this way, especially when it strikes you on a, a distance. And your, and your um, objective is to move away from his attack. So that's the back stance. And so that you could also be able to give a counter strike. So that's the back stance. Now we go to the application or the drill of the stances. To be able to uh, develop your straddle stance, you should be able to have a partner and strike you from different angles and try to assume the straddle stance, front stance, or back stance. We'll show you. I will call my student here. He'll be the one to do the strikes. And I will just do it slowly so that you'll be able to see. Okay, if he strikes me here, that's the front uh, straddle stance. 
I will do first the, front, uh, the straddle stance. Strikes me here, I block, and assume the straddle stance. Strikes me here, then block, straddle stance. Now, if I want to apply the front stance, I will close in the gap, no? I will close in. Okay, if it strikes me, done. That's the, this is the front stance. Strikes me here, done. Front stance. Okay, strikes me again. This is the front stance. That's the front stance. The back stance done this way. If it strikes me here, okay, I move back, no? Or lean back. The weight again, 70 and 30. Strikes me there, bang. This is the back stance. Strikes me here, bang, block. So basically a box stance is applied in a long distance or as opposed to the front stance, it's not close, it's far from your opponent. That's the three stances of Lema scientific arnis. The next segment we're going to show you is the Lima Scientific Arnis System's footwork. Basically, we have two. One is Cambio and the other one is Sigida. We're going to show you first how Cambio is done in slow manner, then in its application. Cambio is actually an LSI or Lima Scientific Arnis System's reverse triangle positioning to defend against a strike. So it's done in this manner, no? First, you move away from the force of the strike that opposes your footwork. It's done in this manner. By first lifting your rear leg to the other side of your front leg. Then move your other leg from where your first leg that you lifted in its place. So it's done in this manner, no? Notice the kind of stance that I am assuming. It is a straddle stance, or it could also be a front or a re, uh, back stance. It's slightly bent. Then as soon as the, your front leg or your first step touches the ground, the other leg is moving away and placing it on the rear portion of your stance. No? So it's done in this manner. Done. Okay, so as I was saying, in cambio, you do it because the strike is opposing your footwork, so you move on the other side. So if it strikes you here, you don't go this way, but you switch to the other side. It's here. It's somehow you're able to deflect the strike without actually getting in contact or absorbing the impact of the opponent's strike. It's like this. Huh? So this is cambio. Cambio is actually imagining that there is a triangle in front of you. No? Here, place it here. Place your hind leg here and the little leg. So you should be able to imagine that there is a triangle object in front of you in applying the cambio footwork. That's cambio. Now we're going to show you how the cambio is done with a partner. This is done so that you could improve your cambio movement with a partner. I have here my student, Bobo Tocano, who's going to feed me the strikes as I am going to apply the cambio. Slowly, slowly first. Strike, okay. I apply the cambio on the right side. Then, here. Try to observe that I'm not absorbing the impact of his strike, but I'm switching to the other side, applying the reverse triangle positioning of the cambio. Here, yeah. I'm trying to evade these strikes by applying the cambio. Yeah. You can do this first slowly, then minimum speed, then fast. This way, you're able to develop the speed, a 
accuracy in applying the cambio. That's cambio. Now I'm going to explain to you the seguida. Seguida is this position going on the same side but not switching on the other side. It is because the strike is coming on this direction and your position is already correct. No? You don't oppose or absorb the strike by applying the cambio. Instead, you're applying the seguida by moving just forward and by exerting effort on your rear leg to be able to push your front leg on the same side. Okay, I'll show it again. It's like this. The first leg that you lift is the front leg and not the rear leg. Again, it's here. It's not like this, but rather it's like this. It's not like this, but it's like this. It could also be applied in retreating position. Could also be like this. And in reverse manner, if you move back, it's your front leg that pushes your rear leg like this. You're not actually lifting it high, but you're just trying to slide forward or backward. That's Sigida. This is now the drill for Sigida. All his strikes should be straight punches to be able to apply Sigida, except hook punches, otherwise you have to apply the cambio. So it's done in this manner. Slowly, he will strike me with his left hand, Sigida. He applies the cross, right cross, I play the Sigida. And if he charges forward, with this straight punch, I'll just move back. Forward here. Yeah. If it strikes me again with the other hand, play the Sigida. Okay, we'll do it slowly again. Okay, here. Sigida. Then move here, strike me again. Here. Yeah. That's Sigida. You move on the same side, maintaining the same footwork. Move on the same side. Okay, we'll do it again. Yeah, church. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one more strike. Yeah. So that's Sigida. And if you want to improve your footwork, applying the Sigida, you can just do it by applying mo uh, speed. Okay, let's do it in a moderate speed. Bang. That's Sigida. Now here's the empty end application of Cambia. So that's Cambio in empty hand application. Now we're going to show to you the uh, application of the Sigida, done or used against a left-hander, no? a left-hand attack with a knife. Okay, we'll do first the slow motion, then the full speed with counter. The slow motion is like this. Sigida, the position is already correct. No? Okay, if he strikes here with the left hand, block it here. Then if he strikes me again, lock it here, step forward, then move complete. Then strike here, then if he trusts me, here, block. And parry his hand. Okay. We'll do the moderate speed, no? With block, without counter first. Okay. <laughs> Now we're going to do the Sigida with counter. Only single attack counter. Move a little further. Yeah. Stretch me again. 
Now we're going to show to you the application of Sigida footwork at full speed. Okay. Now, I move on the same side because the force is coming from here. Okay. Sigida at full speed. In this segment, we're going to show you the 13 basic strikes. The 13 basic strikes are actually basic strikes focused on different targets of the body of the opponent. So it's done in this manner. Did you see that? I think we have to do it slowly. Now these are the 13 basic strikes with a partner. I will be executing the 13 basic strikes with proper focus on the target. Notice how I place my stick at the back of my, my shoulder. It's cut here. It's not like this. It's, the elbow should be lifted up, no? providing enough space to deliver a strike. As I strike the number one, Notice or observe how I twist or jerk my torso or my hip. That's strike number one. Then the follow through is important. Then place your stick here. Your left hand should be placed under, not like that, so as not to obstruct your striking hand. It's placed downward here. It's not like this, otherwise it would again block my striking hand. So this number two, it's directed at the elbow or the hip. Number three, the other side, no? the elbow and the hip of the opponent again. Number four, strike to the shoulder. Again, try to observe how I deliver my strike. I keep on twisting my body to be able to generate power. No? So that as soon as it hit the target, it would uh, apply a damage on your opponent. Strike to the shoulder. Then follow through, put the stick here, then apply the number five, five strike. Again, try to observe how I place my striking hand. It's close to my ribs on this side, so as to be able to deliver a stable thrust. It's not this manner, because if you do it this manner, it would just bend, no? You won't be able to deliver a, an effective strike or thrust. So it's done in this manner. Going upward, no? It's not like that. Otherwise, you'll be bending your wrist. It might be able to break your wrist if you do it that man in that manner. So thrust this way. Then place it on the side of your shoulder here, on your left side. Then deliver the sixth strike to the other side of the temple. No? Pouring your weight on this side, no? Angular. No? Together with strike, try to move your body downward. Then the seventh, again a thrust to the left chest of the opponent. The thrust should be linear. It should, should not be like that. No? Again, it would deflect your stick and not be able to deliver a good thrust. So it should be like this. Your hand should be close here, not this way, unlike if you use a, a striking technique. It should be done in this manner. But in thrusting on the upper body of the opponent, it should be close to your body. And on the eighth strike, it is a thrust to the chest on the other side. Again, your hand should not be far away from your, the center of your body should be close and move forward and trust. So the power does not only come from your hand, it also comes from your body that moves forward. There. Then move or place your stick on your 
left shoulder, strike the leg or the knee. This is the ninth strike. This is the tenth strike on the other leg. Again, applying the same principle, no? Body coordination, twisting, and placing of the stick at the back of your shoulder. That's number 10. Then 11, thrust to the eye. The same principle again should be applied in thrusting. Then 12, to the other eye. And the 13 is the most important. It's not done in this manner. Otherwise, your power, your power will only come from your hand, the strength of your hand. But do it with proper body coordination. Your shoulder should be squarely facing the opponent, like this, no? And as you strike or deliver a strike downward, it should simultaneously, your body should simultaneously be facing on your left side. It's like this, huh? To be able to deliver a power strike. And your hand should be extended so as to be able to ward off your opponent and deliver a good vertical strike. Like that, hmm? Mm. And your legs, try to observe the legs, they are not straight, no? They are slightly bent, applying again the principle of stance, no? This is the straddle stance. As soon as you apply the vertical strike, you somehow move or lean back, no? Try to assume the uh, back stance. Then as soon as you strike, move forward, front stance, then Assume the straddle stance after applying the vertical strike. So it's actually a flow, no? A flow of strikes continuously done with uh, continuity and proper body movement. Now I'm going to do it continuously in moderate speed and with accuracy. This one, two, three, four, five, Six, temple, seven, thrust, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Again, I would like to stress how my left hand is coordinating with my right hand. No? If I strike here, I don't place my left hand here. I place it at my chest. No? So that in case he suddenly grabs me, I have my left hand ready to ward him off. And as I strike here, I don't place it here. Automatically, it's placed on, the, on this level. And if I strike him like that, I immediately or automatically place my left hand at my chest as a ready position. So I, this time, I'm going to do it in full speed. Ready? So that's the 13 basic strikes and its principles involved. Now I'm going to show you the uh, 13 basic strikes at my right side so that you can have a full view of how I do or execute the 13 basic strikes. I'll do it slowly first. I did not just do it on the right side, but notice I applied the same principles, no? This time I'm going to do it in full speed. That's the 13 basic strikes done at my right side. In this segment, my two students, Bobot and uh, Joey, will be doing the, third, uh, the 12 methods. 12 methods are actually 12 basic combinations of different strikes. 
These strikes are the strikes that, comes from, that come from uh, 13 basic strikes. What they will do is just combine these strikes in an orderly, scientific, and uh, logical manner. We have uh, put them or placed numbers on these combinations, one, method 1 up to method 12. They will do it first slowly. Again, as I was saying, they will apply the principles of the ELSI uh, technique, which is the body coordination, the movement of the, uh, the jerking of the hips, and the twisting of the shoulders no? to be able to generate power in this manner. So my students will do the uh, 12 methods one by one by the number. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Ready? Up. So that's method one in slow motion. Now they will do the method two. Method two actually is an application of a spadai daga technique. It is applied in a close quarter combat. So notice how they extend their left hand toward of an attack or the striking arm of the opponent. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, hop. Again, that's method two. Method three is an application, again, of Espadai Daga technique. There is a slight variation between method two and method three. The only difference is the, the fourth count is a blocking technique applying the uh, payong, payong block. Okay, method three, ready? One, two. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, hop. I think in this particular point, I have to stress the application with a partner of method three. Now I'll do the application of a method three in sequence by the number, one by one, up to count number four. My student will try to attack me applying different strikes, no? Strike first here. No, okay, right then. Yeah. That's number one. Black, two, I place it here. Notice I did not strike it like this way, no? I just block it and apply the sigida. Then three, strike my leg. Yeah. I block, no, here. Then it's like my head. I will apply the bird payong. Okay. We'll do it once again. One, two, three, and I'll go four. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So that's the application of method three. Now they will proceed to method four. Method four, ready? Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, ready, hop. Okay. So that's method four. First, it's method one. Then the hop strike, then Applying the number six strike. So that's method four. Method four down. Then we'll go to method five. Method five composed of three strikes, three combination strikes. Okay, ready? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, ready, hop. So that's method five. Now I'm going to apply the method five in combat situation. Slow motion first. 
in a slow manner. If, he's, if he strikes me, I'll apply the strike against strike block and apply the cambio. Okay, strike me one slowly. I move here. Punta yung stick mo dun. Then, I give him a up strike. Then, strike him here before he strikes me. Okay, we'll do it slowly again. One. One. Two. Three. Okay. This time, we'll do it fast. Move back. Ready? One. That's the method five application. Now we'll move to method six. Uh, method six. And now we'll go to method six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, ready, hop. Okay. Now we'll go to the application of method six. Again, we'll do it in slow manner. And we strike me one. Two, black, strike me one. Three, ako, ako. Then four. Then here. That's method six in slow motion. Now I will apply it in full speed. That's method six in full speed. Now we'll go to method seven. Ready, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, ready. So that's method seven. We'll do again the application of method seven is slow and fast movement. Ready, one. Slow motion. Two, three, four. Okay, one. Two, three, four. Okay. This in full speed. That's method seven in full speed. Now we'll go to method eight. Method eight is again composed of three strikes, applying the figure eight at the last count. Ready, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, ready, hop. Okay, enjoy. Now this is the application of method eight in slow motion and in fast movement. Okay, one. In, this, in fast application. That's method eight. Now we'll go to method nine. Method nine is composed of three strikes again. Ready, one, two, three. One, two, three, one. Ready, hop. That's method nine. You will observe that in method nine, we apply the last strike which is the doblete, or the doblada. It's like this, huh? one, two. In one single strike, there are two strikes executed. Okay, this is the slow application of method nine. First, a single strike. Then, up strike. Third is the 
It's strike number six. Then on the second rep repetition, it's the two, two strikes or the doublete. Up strike, strike. So that's method nine. Now we'll go to method 10. Method 10 is a little more complicated uh, combination of strikes. There is the doublete and the figure eight. Ready, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, ready, hop. So that was method 10. This is how it's done in slow motion. Okay, one. Ah. Bang. Strike. Strike again. Bang. Bang. In full speed. Strike like that. That was method 10. And now we'll go to method 11, which is a composition of two strikes and a re reverse two strikes. Applying the a slight, slight, I said slight, no? Slight, slight cambio. It's not a full cambio, only a slight cambio. Ready? Jogi pantai One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Ready? Hop. Okay. That was method eleven. You will notice how they slightly apply the cambio. No. We do it this way so that we can have a full view of the opponent and be able to strike effectively at the target. And we put it back so that we would be able to do again effectively the reverse doublete. Huh? Okay, we will do it in slow manner. Strike me. Strike me there. Strike me here. Strike me. Okay, mo yan, Tama ko yan. Okay, we'll do it in full speed ready. Come on. Come on. That was method 11. And now we'll go to the last method, which is the 12th 12, 12 method. It is composed of four strikes in close quarters. Again, it's somehow similar with method two and method three. Only this time, the fourth strike is a strike to the hand or head. Ready, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, ready, up. So that was method 12. Okay, we'll do it in slow, we'll do it slowly. One, two. I stopped him, no? To avoid his strike to follow through. Then, this could either be a block or a strike to his leg. Before he's able to strike me, I strike his leg. Or if I, I was not able to catch his strike, I'll just block his strike. Then the fourth strike, it's a counter. Strike to the head. Here. Okay, I'll do it again in slow manner. Stop his hand again. Then move back, block, or strike to the leg. Then strike his head. Okay, we'll do it fast this time. Okay, I'll do it alone, huh?
That was method number 12. The 12 methods that you have just seen are combination of strikes which is very essential, which are essential in the Lema scientific army system. It is the foundation of techniques and striking techniques, drills, to be able to go to the higher level of training in a Lema scientific army system. It develops the speed, power, coordination of the body, and the logical combination of different 13 basic strikes. Again, I would like to stress that uh, matter for, uh, so that the students would be able to appreciate the 12 methods for the combination of strikes. Now in this segment, we'll be showing you the 11 basic blocks of the Lema Scientific Kaliarni System. 11 basic blocks are actually an application also of strikes and blocks against strikes which are very uncomfortable for a defender if you're not familiar with the technique. As I go on, you would notice what I mean by uncomfortable position defending against a very unexpected strike from an opponent. Okay, I'll do it first slowly, as I will be explaining. I think I'll be doing it first on front view, and second phase, I'll do it on the side view. The first block is also strike number one against strike number one. Then I apply the straddle stance and the cambio. If he strikes me here, this is the second block. I counter or block applying cambio and strike number six. Then if he strikes my leg, I will just apply the strike number 10. Strike number 10 of the basic 13 strikes. Then if he strikes my leg here, I'll apply the strike number nine or strike number three here. As I move away, from the line of attack of the opponent. Then strike number five is a thrust to my, you know, I thrust to my chest. This is now a close quarter combat. Then I block, I did not strike, but I just block. Then ward off his attacking hand, or the hand that holds the knife. Then strike number six, again, it's not a strike on my part, but I'll just to, I will just parry his thrust. It's actually a thrust on my right chest. It's done this manner. Then applying the cambio. It's here. Then strike number, block number seven is a block against strike on my leg. Then I block it here. Placing my stick here. Again, my hand is not like this, but my elbow is placed upward so that I could be able, I would be able to deliver a good block. Then strike number eight is a thrust to my stomach this time. Again, I will apply the cambio. Then this is the way I will block it here. With my left hand as a support to his thrust. Then strike number nine, this is what I mean by uncomfortable uh, position against a very unexpected strike. If your stick is here, and if it strikes you here, and you don't, put back your stick, you won't be able to block effectively his strike because the strike is too, too fast and too strong. So what we should do is move our leg back to a safer place, then just twist your stick like this to block this the strike coming from here. Then place it back here. Then that's the block number nine. Again, if he strikes me here, I won't be able to apply the block number one because my stick is placed here. What I should do is just apply the payong. Then apply the segida. Move away from the target. No? It's block number 10. Then unexpectedly strikes again my head. I won't be able to strike again this way because there's no more time. This is a surprise strike. Because my stick is here, I won't be able to apply the block or the payong block or the umbrella block. So what I should do is just 
twist my stick here, and as if I'm cutting my head no? here to apply the block. So that's the uh, 11 basic blocks. You would be able to appreciate this better with a partner as I do it is. We'll do it in slow manner, then we'll do it in moderate speed. I will call one of my students, Leo, and we'll do it slowly. And I'll be able to show you or apply these basic blocks. We'll do it on the side view. No? Okay. One. It's block number one. Follow through. Two. See, I applied the cambio. Then I strike my leg. It's block number three. I again apply the cambio. Strike again my leg. This is block number four. Bang. Block it here. Then he thrust my chest. This is now the close quarter combat. I, I just parry his thrust. Then simultaneously blocking his striking arm here. I'll do it again. Bang. Place my stick here. Not there. Here. Then if he strikes me, two continuous strikes like this. One, two. How do you defend against that kind of strike? One, two, suddenly strikes your leg. This is how it's uh, protected. One, then two. Okay, we'll repeat it. He strikes me, he trusts me here, and immediately shifted to striking my leg. We'll do it slowly. One, I apply the cambio, and I place back my stick here, not here. Otherwise, we would be hitting each other. And the first one who's fast will be on the, on the advantage side because he'll be able to strike his opponent first. But if I defend against him this way, even if he's fast, I'll be able to block him. Just ward off his hand. Or if I'm not able to ward off his hand, and if he happens to strike me, I have the stick to block him and apply the cambio. Okay, we'll do it in a... In a, in a um, Fluid motion. Okay, strike me in. Six, seven. Good. Eight is a thrust to my stomach. No? Slow. Here. Then I supported my stick here. No? Then I again, I ward off. I will ward off his hand. No? It's a vertical block. Then he strikes me coming from that direction. Then this is block number nine. Okay, we'll repeat that. From eight. Here. Then I place back my front leg. Then 10 is a strike to my head. I apply the payong. Then 11, here. Okay. Tuck, yan. Here, no? Slowly tuck. Then I can now apply my counter. Okay, we'll do it slowly in continuous manner. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ha! Yeah. Now in this particular segment, and I see this as a very important segment, because now I'll be showing you the uh, application of all the basics that I've just shown you in this tape series. Now, this is actually the application of strikes, the flow of strikes. How to deliver a strike without uh, being able to be countered because your strike is continuous. The right angling, the right distancing, and the logical strikes that should be executed after your opponent has attacked you. I'll do it first no, in a very slow manner. Then later on, on the latter part of this segment, I'll show to you how it's done in uh, full speed and with power. Okay, as I go on in slow motion, I will be explaining its flow. This is very important, how, you, how I twirl my sticks, where it should go, what my position is, should be. I think this 
one aspect of this segment that should be uh, taken notice of no okay he will deliver me as strike one I might defend it by going this way or I might strike my again I might block it here okay there are two ways so I will first switch to the left side on my side now slowly slowly okay I block it here I place my stick here strike his elbow notice I did not strike his head I strike I will strike his elbow if his hand is still here if it's not here I strike his head strike his head again then strike his elbow or hand so as to avoid him to place his stick here because if he's able to put his stick on this side it would be my problem if I go this way oh, it's hard now to block or counter his strike if I, his stick is there but if I'm able to move here or switch here and ward of his stick is now under my control I can just move my left foot back then strike or vertical strike then apply the figure eight slowly here in fast it's here or if I move to the right side I will just first apply the strike number one and ward off his hand and go close quarters combat case right now. here no then I move a little backwards strike his hand leg knee and strike his head strike here slow motion strikes knee strike head strike head again and if his hand is still there I'll strike his wrist then hold it strike here strike his knee. notice I apply the cambio switch shift to this side so that he won't be able to use his left hand okay I'll do it continuously slow motion Bang. Okay, that's in moderate speed. Now I'll do it fast. No? I just go there. Okay. Okay, strike here. Strike. Okay. Again, I'll now this time I'll go on this side. That's the flow of striking drill. <laughs> now we go to the final segment of this tape series, which is the Bigay Tama. Bigay Tama means uh, give a strike and he will counter. I will give him the different angles of his strikes and my student Bobot here will counter it. Now there are two phases of this training drill. This is actually a free flowing drill. There are no patterned movements. I can strike him anywhere I want and he should be able to logically defend and switch to from side to side which is the safe side against an attacking uh, uh, attacking person now in the, the first segment is uh, only a defense Bobot here will not counter any strike he will just defend against all the angle of strikes that I should be feeding him and on the second segment or second part of this training drill he will now try to counter every strike I give him he will give 
a counter for each strike, I will feed him. As we go on, we will do it slowly, rhythmically, and with proper positioning so that you'll be able to see the proper combination. Another aspect of this drill is that this is actually an advanced drill for students. The, por the part that I'm going to play here is the one feeding the strikes. It may look easy, but it's actually hard if you do it yourself. It takes enough time, a lot of time, or practice drills to be able to uh, acquire this skill because it needs flow, it needs a continuity of strikes and proper execution of attacks. Okay, we will do it now, no? Slow motion first. This is the defense without the counter. Slow motion, but slowly. Trust, then another trust, another strike, vertical strike. Okay, move here. You know. Slowly, two strikes, ballet, bang, 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 bang. You will notice how he moves. He moves by applying the segida and the cambio. And also he applies the basic strikes. A basic strikes actually could, could also be a blocking strike, especially when it's done in a uh, largo or distance fighting. Unlike in short distance, you don't apply a strike, you apply a parry, which means there's no follow through, but just stopping, stopping the attack. We'll do again this technique in slow motion. Okay. Bale. Sigida yun, sigida. 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 Sigida yun. Sigida. Yan. Okay. Hop! Yan. Now we'll do it not so much on speed but with power, no? Okay. I will apply power in my strikes. Dalawa. That's the Bigay Tama defense movement. Now I will show you in slow motion Bigay Tama with counter. This time we'll do it faster and with power. I was not just trying to hold my, my, attack, my strikes, I was really trying to hit full impact and we follow through, like this, huh? 
The reason behind is that the Lima Scientific Kali Arnis system is a combat-oriented martial arts or Arnis style. We don't believe in uh, strikes that you hold it upon hitting the target. We try to uh, condition the mind of our students so that when he's able, when he is fighting on the street, he's not afraid to block the strikes because it's different if you're laid on the street when your attacker is already hitting you with full speed and power. So this is a good drill and a training in mind and in body, the kind of strikes that is actually done or uh, applied in actual combat. Now we're, we're going to go to the uh, final part of this Bigay Tama system or drill. It's actually a stick and dagger or spade daga against a single stick. Joey here will try to defend against the different combination of strikes, the single and dagger, that I will make. Now he should be able to defend against this combination of strikes in different angles. Because of his uh, good foundation in the Lema system, he'll be able to defend against my combination and logical strikes because his system, the system of the basic uh, lemma, is actually designed to defend against different angles and even in a very confusing combination strikes that your attacker may apply on you. As I go along, I will try to explain every detail of it that I might see necessary for your uh, appreciation and understanding. Okay, we will first do it in slow manner. No? And afterwards, I'll, we'll do it in moderate speed and with uh, power. Okay. Okay, one. Okay. You notice he applied the basic block, block number one. Then he applied another basic block, another block. Oh, slowly this time and soft block. Then here, apply the block number six. Number seven, I trust him here. And I vertical, apply the vertical strike, apply the payong, and trust. And you will notice, he was applying the sigeda and the cambio footwork. And the straddle, the back stance, and the front stance. Okay, we will again do it slowly. One, see, this is straddle stance, no? If I strike him here, Oh, he did not place his stick here. Because logically, if he places his stick there, I will strike him here, and he will strike me here. We'll both hit each other, and no one will be able to stand that kind of strike. Okay, we'll do it again. Back to original position there. Pa -pa -pa. Here. I trust him here. See, he did not place his stick there. Place his stick here. Because he knows that I'm going to follow him up with another strike here. And if I apply, apply that strike, he is ready to block it because his stick is there. Then if I trust him here, oh, you see his hand is now applying the serada or the ward off. And not like this. I'll show you what I mean. If he does not apply his hand by warding off my striking, you know. Pag apply, you know, I'll strike him again. See? That's the reason behind why we try to follow it up with a checking hand. Checking hand. If I trust him, it's there. Oh. If I strike him here, it's black. Trust here. Oh, see his hand again. If I trust him here, hop. Oh. You see his hand, left hand, he applied it again. I strike him here. Oh. Trust. If I trust him here, okay, his hand, he applied again, his left hand. And his stick is again here. It's not just after hitting me again, uh, hitting me at once. Because if he hit me at once, it's also possible that I will hit him here. We'll both get hit. No, one's, no one will benefit from that. Both players will fall to the ground. Okay. Okay, we'll do it again. This time we'll do it continuously. Okay. One. Slowly. Two. Three. Three, four. Five. Six strike, seven, good, here, hop, oh, ah, oh, here, tang, okay, trust him, here, tang, here, here, 
This time, we'll do this again in slow motion, but with counter. This is now the second phase of this Bigay Tama Drill. Spada in Daga against a single stick. Okay. Ha! Just the counter. Strike, counter. Ha! Counter. Strike, counter. Ha! 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 Slow motion. Pack, pack, then he countered, counters. I block it, I strike, trust him, and he counters. I trust him, he blocks, he counters, and I block. He blocks, he counters, I block. I trust him, I strike him, and he counters, and I block, block. And I trust him, I strike him, he count. Then one, Two, I attack him with several strikes, then he counters finally. We'll do that again, huh? I will apply four continuous, uh, three continuous strikes, and he will counter at the last part. Okay, assume the, you know. okay, one, one, two, three. Then he counters, pack, I block. Pack, trust, pack, pack, pang, pang, oh, pang, pang. Pang. This time we'll do it with additional power. Okay. Go this way, yeah. Huh? I strike here. Pang. 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 So that's the Bigay Tama with power, single stick against Spade Daga. Again, I would like to caution all those who would like to imitate this kind of drill to uh, observe uh, safety and precautions so as to avoid uh, injury to yourselves. Thank you. Now you have just seen the videotape series of Lema Scientifically Earnest System. And at this point, I would like to appreciate and acknowledge and thank the uh, presence of my students here for their participation. I have my student here, Bobo Tocano, Filipe Ocano, a professor at the University of the Philippines Anthropology Department. I have my senior student here, Leo Alvar. I have here uh, my student, uh, Gerald Santos, and one of my senior students also, Joey Batalliones. And I would like to say that uh, Arniz, as my parting word, Arniz is known as a deadly fighting system of the Philippines, yet its value goes beyond its combative use. Arniz is a unique expression of Filipino culture. It involves living out daily ideals such as integrity, dedication, perseverance, and a passion for excellence. We do not only teach the arts alone, we teach our members the harmony of the group, and the dignity of the individual should transcend mere petty uh, ego and pride. And at this point, we hope that you have enjoyed the ex your exploration of our niece with us. We look forward to the uh, future, and we hope that you can join us again. God bless you. Pugay, hop. I would like to thank the Lionheart Production for its uh, honest portrayal of the Filipino culture and Filipino fighting system, which is Kali Arnis system or Kali Arnis fighting system. I also want to thank them for their uh, sincerity in the production of this art. And I would like to make mention one important thing, they, uh, their product, the sticks that we use here, is from Lionheart Productions. And no other company, especially in America, that imports the authentic and with quality sticks that comes from uh, the Philippines.
You've seen it, now you can do it. The authentic Conley Arnis and Escrima collection imported from the Philippines exclusively for you by Lionheart. Authentic mastercrafted rattan fighting sticks, fire hardened with a complete spiral burn with hand carvings on the handles in three different grades. Palasan, 28 inches long by one inch diameter, a whitish skin rattan that grows mainly in the fields of Lusan. Basic all-purpose stick. This basic grade is better than most competitors' top grades. The skin is intact, one to two nodes per stick. $13.95 each or only $25 a pair. Tumalim, 28 inches long by 7 eighths of an inch diameter, a strong reddish skin rattan that grows in various provinces. A nice step up from Palasan is harder and stronger matured rattan. Distinctive dark red hue, beautiful color, two to three notes per stick with overall greater density. $17.95 each or only $30 a pair. Lapsica, 20 inches long by 7 eighths of an inch diameter and three quarters of an inch diameter available upon request. A dark tannish skin rattan that grows mainly in the mountains, only in the rocky areas. This is the highest class rattan stick, the hardest and strongest. Not commonly found, made of very mature rattan with a minimum of four nodes per stick, up to seven and eight on some. This stick offers the highest density obtainable in a master's quality rattan stick. $19.95 each, or only $35 a pair. Authentic, mastercrafted Philippine warrior woods. Bahi, 20 inches long by 7 eighths of an inch diameter. A luminous, fiery colored hardwood, harvested in its top grade from the Bahi tree. $37.95 each, or only $65 a pair. Kamagong, 28 inches long by 7 eighths of an inch diameter. This is authentic Philippine ironwood, the hardest and strongest wood known. Beautiful black wavy color. $57.95 each, or only $95 a pair. Special video coupon. Order one pair of any rattan sticks and get your second pair at 50% off. That's right, your second pair for half price. Send check or money order to Lionheart, Inc., P.O. Box 211, Somerdale, New Jersey, 08083. That's Lionheart, Inc., P.O. Box 211, Somerdale, New Jersey, 08083. Or call 609-784-8700. That's 609-784-8700.